I was driving home from college during fall break. It was normally a two-hour drive, but being that I'm the kind of girl who loves the changing of seasons, I decided to extend my ride home by driving deep into the woods with the hopes of seeing some brilliant fall colors. It was a direction that added nearly 40 minutes of travel time to my ride home. I had taken the route in question a couple times before when I was feeling adventurous and was in an extended driving mood, but had never experienced it during autumn. My hunch of what beauty it may behold during peak foliage time was correct. The woods had erupted in an explosion of gold, amber, crimson, and rust. It was nothing short of magnificent. My eyes were so locked on to the beauty of the trees that I barely saw the gigantic buck jump out in front of my car. I stomped on the brakes and came to a screeching halt just inches from the impressive creature's muscled body. The buck stood relaxed, never having flinched by the near collision. It stared directly at me for a brief moment, as if offended by my presence before finally prancing away. I let out a deep breath and stepped on the accelerator to get moving again, only to realize that my car had died. A chill ran through my body. This was not the ideal place to have a breakdown. A wave of relief splashed over me when I turned the key and the engine roared to life. Unfortunately, my comfort was premature as the car died out again as soon as I shifted it into drive. I repeated the process over a dozen times before I came to the realization that I wasn't going to be able to drive my car. I immediately pulled out my cell phone, and wouldn't you know it, there was no cell phone service. I was stranded all alone in the middle of nowhere. I sat in my car for 20 minutes in hopes that someone would stop and help me, but not a single car drove by, so I decided to get out and start walking. The nearest town was a 30 minute drive away, so I realized there was no way I was making it there anytime soon on foot. My hope was that somewhere down the road I'd get cell service and could call for help. An hour later I still hadn't found a cell signal, and not one car had passed by. To top it off, a mist of rain was starting up. I was in real trouble. I grew optimistic when I heard the distant hum of an engine, and it was getting closer. Someone was coming down the road. As the vehicle came into view, I recognized it as an extremely old flatbed pickup truck. It was rusted to hell. The truck slowed and came to a halt next to me. The driver leaned over and unrolled the passenger side window. Hey baby, what's a little fox like you doing all alone out this way? The man was slender and had long, greasy hair. He was wearing a filthy white tank top covered with a thin camouflage jacket. Um, my car broke down. He nodded and flashed a tobacco-stained smile. Yeah, I saw it. I felt extremely uncomfortable as the dirty man looked me up and down for an inappropriate amount of time before continuing. Uh, hop on in, I'll give you a lift to town. I looked the truck over as I considered his offer. That's when I saw that he had a bloody deer carcass lying on the flatbed of his truck. He noticed that I was eyeing the animal. Oh, don't worry about her. She won't bite. Get on in here. He pushed the driver's side door open. I stood still as I contemplated my options, which were basically accepting his ride or continuing to walk on my own. I could see the impatience in his face as he waited for me. I didn't want to keep him any longer. Thank you, but I think I'll just walk. He chuckled. <laughs> walk? Walk to where? The nearest town is a 30 minute drive from here. It'll take you 8 hours to walk there. Now stop being a damn fool and get in this truck. It was then that the mist of rain transitioning into a heavy drizzle made me change my mind and I reluctantly got into the strange man's truck which reeked of body odor and stale tobacco water. Glad to see you came to your senses. With that he started driving. 
For the next several minutes, he didn't say anything else. He just kept glancing at me and staring down in the region of my breasts. When he realized I was aware of what he was doing, he spoke up. I, I like your jacket there. My jacket that he was pretending to admire so much was a simple tan windbreaker. I figured since I caught him, he'd at least be more discreet with his gawking, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, I like that jacket a lot. I like them pants, too. I played dumb and tried to remain polite until he got me to town. At any given time, he could opt to pull over and kick me out. Or worse. Thank you. My general uneasiness grew into full-blown fear when he turned off of the main road and onto a dirt path. Hey, where are you going? Why, why are you turning here? Relax, sugar britches. I'm stopping at my homestead. I gotta dump off the deer. Then I'll take you to town. Well, you can just drop me off here. He laughed as he spit a wad of tobacco juice out onto the truck floor and wiped his mouth off with the back of his hand. Settle down, girly. We're almost there. It was just a few seconds later when we arrived at the grimy man's home. It was a literal shack that appeared to be slapped together with various shapes of scrap wood planks. The large rusty metal pipe that was sticking out of the middle of the hut was spewing out smoke. But it wasn't the house that caught my eye immediately. It was the surrounding trees that had dozens of deer carcasses hanging from thick branches. He spoke up when he heard me gasp at the gruesome sight. I only eat deer meat. That's when I noticed the stockpile of junk cars littering his land. From ancient and rusty to brand new, he had hundreds of vehicles scattered about as far as the eye could see. When he pulled to a stop, he gave me a smile and wink. What do you say, little girl? Want to come in and have a hot cup of coffee and some deviled eggs? I made them myself. I immediately shook my head. No, no thank you, I'm just going to wait here for you. Well, suit yourself. The man shut the engine of the old truck off, withdrew his keys, and got out of the vehicle. As he began pulling the deer carcass off the back of his flatbed, I realized that this rather terrifying situation may have been a blessing in disguise. I quickly rolled down my window and hollered out to him, Hey, do you have a phone in your house I can use? No phone. I deflated and sulked as I watched the man pull the deer body around the back of his house and out of sight. I wasn't sure what to do. I had an urge to get out of the truck and run away. On the other hand, with the exception of ogling me and being a bit creepy, he hadn't hurt me in any way. If he meant me harm, that likely would have already happened, so I waited for him. As I waited, I pulled out my phone on the off chance that somehow there would be a cell signal even deeper into the woods where this strange man lived, and not surprisingly, there wasn't. What was surprising, however, was the fact that my cell phone was informing me that there was a Wi-Fi signal available in the area. I immediately tried to connect my phone to it, but it was protected by a password. How was there a Wi-Fi signal out there? That's what I was thinking when I noticed the satellite dish on the edge of the man's shack. Did he have internet service? If he did, surely he had a phone. And if he had a phone, why did he tell me he didn't? This wasn't good. I again contemplated whether or not to run away, but instead, I felt compelled to get closer to his house to see if he had a phone. If he did, and I could reach it, I could call 911. That would at least alert someone of my predicament. As it was, I was at the mercy of the strange man who had me feeling uneasy to say the least. I got out of the car. The stench of rotting deer was haunting the air around me as I slowly approached the man's house. As I got closer, I could hear the man inside the shack talking to someone. When I reached a window, I pushed my face close to the pane of grimy glass and peered into the ransacked house. 
I was looking into the small kitchen, which was cluttered with old, empty food cans and dirty dishes. I saw the man's truck keys lying on the kitchen table amongst a collection of disorder. I instinctively ducked down when I saw the man come into view. When I popped my head back up, I could see him pacing back and forth as he talked on the phone. He was close enough that I could hear him clearly. Yeah, tow her car out here and we'll put it with the rest of them. Oh, I'd say she's in her early 20s. Blonde hair. Hot little body. Oh, we'll definitely have some fun with her tonight. I jumped and screamed when I heard the savage barking of a dog directly behind me. I turned to see a black German Shepherd. His snarl was ferocious and his barking was relentless. Slobber began dripping from his mouth as if he were eyeing me as his dinner. Get over here, dog. The dog obeyed his master and ran behind the man who was standing and staring at me with evil intent glistening in his eyes. What are you doing over there? I spit out the first thing that popped into my mind that I thought the man might believe. Do you have a bathroom I could use? He flashed his tobacco-stained smile as he pointed around in all directions. The world is one big toilet. Pick a spot, darling. I smiled, nodded, and took the opportunity to duck behind the house. Based on what I heard the man say on the phone, it was clear that he and his friend had sick plans that included me. I feared I wouldn't survive the night. If I was going to get away, I had to come up with a plan now before he got suspicious. I could just run off into the woods, but that likely wouldn't bode well for me. Besides, his beast of a dog would easily run me down. That's when I remembered the keys on his kitchen table. If I could sneak into the house and get his keys, maybe I could get to the truck and escape. I found a rickety back door to his house that wasn't even latched. It creaked slightly as I opened it, but not enough for the man to hear. I immediately saw the kitchen table in the far room and was relieved to see the keys still sitting on them. But my attention was quickly drawn to the room I was standing in. The walls of the room were wallpapered with pinups of nude women in the raunchiest of poses. There was a huge wooden table in the center of the room that had leather restraints on the top and bottom, as if for wrists and ankles. At the far end of the table was a video camera sitting atop a tripod. The plans they had for me were no longer a mystery. This was officially a life or death situation. I hurried into the kitchen and just as I grabbed the keys from the table, I heard the man's voice. Caught you red-handed. I looked up and saw the man standing in the doorway holding the most devious of grins. I had to make a choice and fast. I opted for aggression and charged the man. His eyes widened in shock as I rushed toward him. He clearly wasn't expecting that tactic. I reached him before he could properly react and I shoved him with all my strength which sent him crashing to the floor. As I bolted from the house and raced toward the truck, I heard the man yell out, Get her, dog! Get her! The savage dog dashed toward me in a blur. I was close to the truck when the dog collapsed onto the bottom of my pant leg and began pulling me. As I fell to the ground and felt myself being dragged back toward the shack, I saw the man stroll out of the house confidently. You ain't going nowhere, you little bitch. We're gonna have us a nice little sex party tonight, and you're the guest of honor. As soon as that disgusting statement exited his mouth, the bottom of my pants leg ripped off into the dog's mouth, freeing me momentarily. I jumped up, threw myself into the truck, and slammed the door shut just as the vicious dog leapt up onto the hood, barking ferociously. I looked up as I fumbled with the keys and saw the man running toward the truck. I quickly locked the doors, but that didn't stop him from pounding on the windows. The passenger side window shattered from his blows as I turned the key and started the engine. I looked down at the stick shift. I hadn't driven a stick in years, so I was going to be rusty. Just as the man attempted to climb in through the window to grab me, I grinded the gear into reverse and spun the truck around. 
The force of the turn threw the man to the ground. I shoved the stick shift into first gear and peeled down the driveway. By the time I slammed it into second gear, there was no catching me. As I drove away and left the demented man and his dungeon of doom in the dust, I found myself giving thanks to my father for insisting that I learn how to drive a stick shift when I was younger. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I'll be back soon with another scary story.